People have for decades tried to use the immune system to attack cancer, but for, for several reasons. One is it's got memory. If you get a good immune response, you've got T cells for the rest of your life. If cancer comes back, for example, they can attack it. Um, each has a very different receptor on it, can recognize tens of millions of different things in, in a population. And uh, it can change with time because the immune system is a living thing. So despite the fact that, that people have been trying for, for since the 60s actually to, to develop some way of treating cancer, they, they really was never successful. There are several reasons for this, but one of them I believe is that, that uh, it wasn't appreciated how complicated T cell activation is. Uh, we know now that there is uh, three signals that are involved in it. One is the antigen receptor signal, which is kind of like the ignition key in your car at times to sell on. But we showed in the late 80s there's another molecule called CD28 that uh, has to be given at the same time as the T cell receptor signal to get it moving. It's kind of like the gas pedal. C2 Lake 4 had been known for a while, but nobody knew what it did. What we did was to show that it was actually the brakes. It shut off an immune response. And so after we learned this from just really basic studies, of how T cells worked. I reasoned that what might be happening normally is that the T cells would be turned off before they could kill the tumor cells. And so I had the idea that if we just block this, this negative signal, which nobody knew about before then, uh, that we could keep the immune response going long enough to eliminate the tumors. And sure enough, we did a lot of studies in mice, preclinical uh, pre studies in mice. And it was very effective against many kinds of cancer in mice, many kinds of mice. And so then it went to the clinic and it works very well in humans as well. So it's marked uh, the first emergence of immunotherapy uh, along with radiation, chemotherapy and surgery, one of the pillars of cancer treatment. Um, our research at the moment uh, has, has gone all the way through, or the molecule, at least for melanoma, has gone all the way through the approval process by the United States Food and Drug Administration and can now actually be prescribed by almost any doctor uh, for the treatment of metastatic melanoma. It's been that approved since 2011. And we know that in melanoma, about one in four or one in five patients will be alive at least 10 years after a single treatment. This durability is really unheard of. A few years after we uh, the clinical results on, on CTLA-4 came along, there was another checkpoint discovered uh, called PD-1, and it's the existence of this second checkpoint that may explain why CTLA-4 just worked against a fraction of patients. In any event, antibodies to PD-1 have been developed and uh, shown to be also effective against uh, many kinds of tumors, at least. And, and between them, CTLA-4 antibodies and PD-1 antibodies uh, there have been 26 approvals by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, not just melanoma, uh, but also kidney cancer, lung cancer, uh, bladder cancer, uh, Merkel cell, a very lethal kind of cancer, Hodgkin's lymphoma, and on and on. So as we would have predicted, this, this therapy is affected with many different kinds of cancer. Uh, but we also showed that the mechanisms were different. In mice, they were at least additive, so in humans, if you give the two drugs, anacetyl A4 and anapd one at the same time, it looks like 60%, a little bit higher than 60% of patients uh, are alive to two to three years. If they make it another few years, it's likely they're gonna also be alive um, uh, 10 years afterwards. That combination is also approved by the Food and Drug Administration now. And so thousands of patients are, are, are getting it. And so we'll, we'll see how durable it is. But when we started this work, the median life expectancy after diagnosis with melanoma was 11 months. And now, again, we have a fraction of patients, 20% uh, or so, that are cured, basically, that are alive 10 years and later. And it looks like we're going to be able to get that up to 60%. The next challenges are really to get these therapies to work in a higher fraction of patients and in kinds of tumors that they have not yet been successful against, such as uh, glioblastoma and uh, pancreatic cancer. I think we are learning the rules now and I think we're poised to make immunotherapy really a, at least part of a combination therapy for almost every kind of cancer. Uh, 
I think for some types of cancers, such as melanoma and bladder and uh, lung cancer, these things that are caused by carcinogens, uh, we will be able to treat a large fraction of patients successfully with just immunotherapy. However, we know that some others don't respond and we'll have to combine it with radiation or chemotherapy or genomically targeted therapies. Um, but I think the right combinations are, are, are going to prove really successful. And so I think that immunology, immunotherapy is here to stay and uh, will become part of at least a mix of agents to treat many, many types of cancer.